So I am old enough to remember a time when not everything that we purchased was on a subscription. Not that long ago, you could go to a shop to buy Microsoft Office or Adobe Photoshop and then use that one-off purchase for as many years as you liked until you felt ready for an upgrade. But it now seems that all the software that we buy or the online services that we use, like TV, music and games, is all subscription based, with money coming out of our accounts month on month, year after year. Which of course makes it all very expensive. So what I want to share with you today are popular applications and entertainment services that include a free version or free tier. So you don't necessarily have to pay to use them. Or if they don't offer a free tier, I'll recommend an alternative app or service that is completely free. Of course, some of these free versions might not have all the bells and whistles of the paid version, but I guarantee they'll be more than adequate for most people's needs. And I'm confident there's a few in this list that will surprise you. So let's get started. And I want to start with an application that, since it's moved to a subscription model, is now, I feel, outrageously expensive for most non-professional users, and that is Adobe Photoshop. A subscription to Photoshop is now 20 bucks a month, or 240 bucks a year. However, what you might not know is that Adobe offers a very capable online version of Photoshop, which you can use for absolutely free by browsing to photoshop.adobe.com forward slash new. I recommend creating a free Adobe account if you don't already have one, which will let you save your files to their cloud storage. And then once signed in, you can either create a new document, or if you have an existing Photoshop file, you can simply drag and drop it onto the window to open it. You can see that the interface is very similar to the full version of Photoshop. Here on the right, I have access to all my layers, and on the left, I have a similar set of tools. Honestly, for most people wanting to use Photoshop, why would you pay money when you can have access to most of the features for free? When I've finished creating my YouTube thumb, I can export it by clicking on the menu here. Choose Export and export it as a JPEG. From here, I can click on Home, which leads me nicely onto my second free app, another Adobe product, which is Acrobat. Clicking on Home brings you to this page, which you can also access by going to creativecloud.adobe.com. Once here, you can see the other online apps Adobe offers for free. Now, whilst Adobe has Acrobat Reader, as the name suggests, it's little more than a tool for reading PDFs. But this online version of Adobe is much more than that. If I click on All Tools, you can see that the functionality in this version is much more like the full version of Acrobat. You have options to edit PDFs, convert other documents to and from PDFs, add passwords, so on and so forth. For example, if I want to delete a few pages from a PDF, I can click on this option, drag my PDF onto the window, then it's just a case of removing the pages and clicking Save. Here I can also do things like add text and sign documents using Adobe's signature tool. Adobe also offers a range of free apps for iPhone and Android, so I would definitely think twice before handing over your hard-earned cash. Whilst we're on the subject of free online tools, if you prefer using Microsoft Word over other free alternatives like Google Docs or Apple's Pages, but you don't want to pay for the Office 365 subscription, then fire up your browser and head over to office.com. If you have a Microsoft account, you can just sign in. Otherwise, you will need to click on sign up for the free version of Office. You will need to create a Microsoft account because Microsoft won't let you sign in with either an Apple or Gmail account, but having done so and once logged in, you'll land on this page here. You then have access to online versions of Word, Excel and PowerPoint, all offering pretty much the same functionality as their premium equivalents. To create a new Word document, simply click on the icon, choose New Blank Document and away you go. The document will auto save to your Microsoft OneDrive of which you get five gigs of free storage. You can access OneDrive or any of the other Microsoft Office products by clicking here. And then you can download any of your files simply by selecting them and clicking on download. Of course, if you're more of a Chrome user and have a Gmail account, then you may prefer to use Google's Office Suite, which offers very similar functionality or if you prefer using an installed offline document editing product, then I'm told LibreOffice is also very good. 
But certainly I wouldn't go rushing to spend money on Microsoft 365 because these days I just don't think it's necessary. Another popular subscription service is Apple One. And to be honest, for what is included, I think it represents excellent value. For 30 bucks a month, your whole family has access to music, TV, games, news, and fitness, as well as some storage thrown in for your photos. It certainly represents much better value than paying for any of these services individually. However, if you can't justify that kind of monthly outlay, and to be honest, I certainly can't, you have other options. Spotify, Deezer, SoundCloud, and YouTube Music all offer free tiers. And although I can't vouch for Deezer because the free tier is only available in the US, certainly the ads on Spotify and YouTube Music are not too frequent and not too intrusive. So unless you really are someone who absolutely lives for music, it is very possible to get your daily fix for absolutely free. However, when it comes to free TV, you definitely have less options. But most countries will have their own localised free TV apps. The UK has the excellent BBC iPlayer, and here in Australia we have ABC iView and SBS. For my friends in the US, I will link to this video by the excellent Kevin Stratvert, who listed off a whole heap of apps and channels based in the US that offer free movies and TV shows. If you're paying for Apple Fitness, well, I recently did a video that went through my top 10 fitness apps for Android and Apple that are absolutely free. And the standout for me, which I continue to use today, is Nike's Training Club app. This app bills itself as the ultimate personal trainer. It has a library of more than 200 free workouts, catering for all levels of fitness, and all the routines feature video guidance from Nike instructors. Honestly, I wouldn't consider paying for a fitness app until you've given this Nike app a try. Or if running is more of your thing, I also recommend Map My Run. If you've been paying to read the news, then you should consider giving the Guardian News app a try. The New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and Washington Post are all paywalled, as are most newspapers in the UK and here in Australia. The Guardian, however, isn't, and yet it continues to win awards for its top-notch journalism. What started out as a UK-based newspaper now has localised news for the US, UK and Australia, as well as an international edition for everybody else. On the free tier, you'll of course get ads, but they're not too intrusive or disruptive. And if you read the site in your browser, rather than using the app, you can of course use an ad blocker. However, this is one app where I'm happy to allow ads because it does help fund their excellent content. So if you don't want to pay for the news, I highly recommend giving The Guardian a try. Another subscription service that is hugely popular and hugely expensive are ebooks and audiobooks. Amazon seemingly has this market sewn up with Kindle Unlimited and Audible. However, if you are paying for either of these services, then stop immediately. Instead, download an app called Libby and then take a short walk to your local library and sign up for a free library card. Once you have your library card, you can then sign into Libby and immediately gain access to literally a whole library's worth of books and audiobooks. It's not just the old classics that are available through Libby, you'll also find all of the New York Times bestsellers, as well as a surprisingly large array of magazines. Honestly, I don't know how Libby do it, and I don't know how this free service is legal, but it definitely is, and you definitely won't need to pay for another ebook or audiobook ever again. So you can thank me by leaving a nice message in the comments. <laughs> Gaming is another area that has been monetized with subscriptions. Xbox Game Pass is currently 10 bucks a month, and Sony's PlayStation Plus is a whopping 18 bucks a month, or $120 a year. That being said, the world of in-app purchases has revolutionized the industry, with developers realizing that they're better off getting people onto their platforms for free in the hope that they can then tempt you to part with your cash. For this reason, most mobile games are free to install and then subsidized with both ads and those in-app purchases. However, if you are willing to stick to your Mac or PC to play games, then you should consider downloading Steam or Epic Games. These platforms offer a range of big name titles which you can play for free. Just remember to steer clear of those in-app purchases. 
Finally, the last subscription service that I wanted to cover was VPNs. More and more people are concerned about their online privacy and rightly so. If you use public Wi-Fi, frankly, a VPN is an absolute must. But that doesn't mean that you need to pay for it. You've no doubt seen or heard ads for ExpressVPN and NordVPN, both of whom offer very good deals to get you signed up. And let's be honest, these deals are usually relatively cheap. However, you can save yourself the price of a coffee each month because there's absolutely no need to pay for a good, reliable VPN service. My go-to free VPN service is called Proton VPN. It is absolutely free. There are no ads and no data caps, and the company is based in Switzerland, which is the home of privacy. If you'd like to know why I love Proton VPN, I'll link to a video I did on it last year. So there are my 10 free alternatives to some of the most popular paid subscription apps. If you found the video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hitting subscribe for lots more useful tips and tricks. And you might also be interested in learning the worst apps for draining your phone's battery and a neat trick for reading articles blocked behind a paywall. Until next time, my name is Anthony. Thank you very much for watching.